Murphy. Tonight we have the story of a Valley athlete whose Olympic protest made headlines around the world. CBS 47's Anthony Bailey explains. Well, you may have seen the images of two sprinters holding up a fist on the victory stand during the 1968 Olympics. That gold medalist was from right here in our own backyard. The victory stand at the Olympic Games is one of the biggest platforms in the world. In 1968, Olympic sprinter Tommy Smith saw it as the perfect moment for he and fellow sprinter John Carlos to take a stand on the issue of race in America. It was flaring, very flaring. Us uh, in the 60s, uh, the the King administration, the Kennedy administration, uh, the uh, uh, Malcolm X, and others that made Tommy think do better than what he did yesterday. At the time, Smith, who was part of the ROTC, was on scholarship at San Jose State. We worked and we acquired that 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 uh, uh, egocentric type attitude of working to survive. Raised in Lemoore as one of 11 children, Smith says he was taught to work hard and stay quiet. I came from the cotton fields in the San Joaquin Valley. I didn't hear very much of news any time while I was growing up in the valley and, and into uh, uh, Lemoore High School. His record-breaking speed on the track became his calling card. I do believe the old attitude that action speaks louder than words. The poor treatment of African Americans was something even Smith could not outrun. So, during the 1968 Olympic Games in Mexico City, he joined the fight for racial equality. After winning the gold medal, with Carlos at his side, Smith took off his shoes and raised his fist on the victory stand. Many people uh, view Anthony, the, the Tommy Smith, and the victory stand as a militant act. It was not a militant act. It was the only way I could show my allegiance to a country which represented freedom, which represented democracy, which represented culture. The gesture touched off a firestorm. The pair was proud of their silent protest. The U.S. Olympic Committee was not. After being immediately sent home, Smith recalls a toxic environment that touched every aspect of his life. And I went to school at night because I was afraid to go to school during the day because I re received death threats. As with many athletic protests, Smith recalls being unjustly vilified and misunderstood. It was a platform, not the flag. We were not there to fight that flag, only the negativity of how we were treated. That explanation would fall on deaf ears for years. Smith would finish his degree. He would later teach at levels from elementary school to the university. Through that time, the country began to change. People saw the protests differently. Four decades later, San Jose State unveiled this statue of the pair. It would be over a decade still before the U.S. Olympic Committee saw the error in its ways. The group finally inducting Smith and Carlos into the Olympic Hall of Fame. Smith, having set more world records than any other man or woman at the time, felt it was an honor that he had earned. Others, uh, which I know who don't have platelets, he should have gotten those awards or 50 years later. A half century long battle he took for his younger self. That induction 50 plus years later was an induction of, uh, of a 24 year old student athlete who worked in the fields, acquired a scholarship, got a degree and, and moved forward proactively uh, fighting racism. He had this to say about those currently in the trenches fighting for racial justice. Don't uh, throw your ideas to the wind and hope somebody might catch on. Now Smith retained control of the medals. He has since donated them to a local museum in his hometown. If you'd like to learn more about his story or other figures during our Honoring Black History series, all you have to do is head to our website, yourcentralvalley.com. In studio, Anthony Bailey, Eyewitness News.